If you're planning desserts for a casual or rustic wedding, well, the key is to think untraditionally. So how about some donuts? Don't those sound like fun? And my goodness, my salted caramel donuts, well, they will have you saying I do to quite a few. Now, this style of donut is a yeast-raised donut. So I'm gonna start off with the dough. I have four cups of bread flour in my mixer. I will add a third of a cup of granulated sugar, and a packet of yeast is the equivalent of two and a quarter teaspoons, or seven grams. Now this is instant yeast, which means it doesn't have to be dissolved in liquid, so I can add it right to my flour. And I do have half a teaspoon of salt, and I just toss the salt on the other side of the bowl from the yeast. That way it doesn't come in direct contact when I add my liquids. Instead of adding water, I add milk, and I have one and a half cups of milk. Room temperature is best, or just above body temperature. It allows the yeast to activate and come to life. I also have two egg yolks and one whole egg. Lastly, I have six tablespoons of unsalted butter. It's cut up and it's at room temperature too. I'll just turn the mixer on low to get everything going. There we go. You can actually see the stretches of elasticity as the dough sticks between the dough hook and the bowl itself. So even though it's a soft dough, I can tell it's well kneaded and ready. So I'll just transfer this out to a separate bowl. This recipe yields 15 to 18 donuts, depending on the size and style you cut out. I'm going to let this sit for an hour and come back and show you then how to roll, cut, fry, and make that sea salt caramel glaze. Woo, look at this dough. Now you'll find that if you let your dough rise in the fridge overnight, it won't come up quite so much. It'll be a little more subdued, but it will still be ready to roll. So, peel this away. And the minute you turn this dough out, it will start deflating. And I have no problem with generously flouring my work surface. I do not want this dough to stick. There we go. Flour the top. And just so long as it's got a good amount of flour underneath and on top, you're ready to roll. You don't want to start kneading the dough now. So I rolled the dough out to about half an inch thick. I want donuts with presents. Okay, this is about a half an inch thick. Let it relax, give it a little shake. Now I've got a three inch cookie cutter and I've got a large piping tip. If you have a donut cutter, of course you can use one. It's got the built-in hole in the center. I don't, this will work just fine. And now I'll just cut as many as I can. quite closely together. You can dip your cookie cutter in the flour. And now to cut out the holes. Ooh, you could save those and fry them up. I have 11 from the first roll. For the second roll, you wanna allow a little time for the dough to relax. Really, this dough only needs about 20 minutes to rest. But it's just as well, because that way you have a controlled process. You can fry the first batch, and don't forget, we have to make the sea salt caramel glaze for these donuts. So I'm gonna pop these to the side and cover them with a tea towel, and just give them a little time to rise. Have a little nap. Time for that sea salt caramel glaze. I'll add two tablespoons of water. You don't have to measure that. It's just enough to cover. So when you add your half a cup of granulated sugar, it immediately starts dissolving. In addition to that, to help keep the sugar liquefied as I'm caramelizing it, I add two teaspoons of lemon juice. I'll bring the sugar up to a full boil over high heat. There's no need to stir. I have a quarter of a cup of whipping cream and half a cup of unsalted butter. Be careful of the bubbles boiling up. So if you're choosing a pot size, a bigger one is always better. Okay, now that the bubbles are slowing down, I can add my butter, and I don't add it all at once, just a little at a time. Okay, now that the butter is fully melted and I've got this lusciously rich caramel sauce, I will add my sea salt. There we go, and now I'll let this sit 
as I finish up the glaze base. So I've got a cup and a half of icing sugar and six tablespoons of milk, a splash of vanilla, and I'll just mix this up together. There we go. And it is quite fluid. So this is a donut that doesn't have just the top dipped in, but the whole donut is just going to get bathed in this sea salt caramel glaze. So now that that's blended, I can add my still warm caramel sauce to this. And that's the sea salt caramel glaze. Time to check on those resting donuts. Here they are. When you wanna to gently touch a donut and when you leave a fingerprint, then you know it's time to fry. Don't worry, it bounces back. I have my pot of vegetable oil heating up. Using a slotted spoon or a tool like this, a spider makes it easy. And what I like to do first, dip it in the oil, so that way you know the donut won't stick. Place the donut on the oil and then just gently drop it in. It's easier to drop the donut onto the spoon and then into the oil. Safer too. All right, and then you just give them a quick tap to flip them over. Oh, look at how they puff up before, after. Before, after. There we go, once they're done. Woo, you can feel how light they are. You put them onto the cooling rack so they have another chance to drain. And you do need them to cool a little bit before you dip them. I'll let the second batch take a few minutes to cool, but now that it's been about five minutes, the first batch is ready to dip. And I'll be honest, I have tried with tongs and forks and to be all dainty and delicate about it, you just gotta get in there. This is why the donut has the hole. And you dunk and flip, dunk and flip. Give it a good shake so the excess glaze comes out. And then you drop it on the tray. Give it a chance to set. Ridiculous! And the finishing touch, after the glaze has had a chance to drip, just that final sprinkle of sea salt. This is why I like the flake salt. Wow, now that is not a traditional dessert for a wedding. Sea salt caramel donuts. You can really get creative with the presentation, of course. You could do bakery boxes right at the table. You can make a tower out of the donuts in place of a wedding cake. Of course, there's the popular donut wall with the hooks out of it that you hang the donuts on. You know what? There's also just picking one up and eating it while it's still warm. Oh, and the caramel hasn't even set yet. Look at how fluffy and light they are. The crispy on the outside. Oh, who could resist a donut? This really turns any day into a special occasion. You don't have to wait for a wedding. Oh, heavens. 